welcome to our morning service which comes today from Buckfast Abbey in Devon. It's an abbey of Benedictine monks who came to this ancient monastic site in 1882. With their own hands they built the present abbey church on the foundations of the original church. It was completed in 1937. Buckfast Abbey is also noted for its bees and honey and for a special brand of tonic wine. There's an abbey preparatory school for nine to 13 year olds, some of whom form the choir for today's mass. Condon, who this year celebrates the golden jubilee of his priestly ordination, who has charge also of the local parish. In the name parish. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also you. My brothers and sisters, Simplicity and humility are at the very heart of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
so as we prepare to listen again to his voice, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask forgiveness, especially for our sins of pride. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you healed the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. <laughs> Father, through the obedience of Jesus, your servant and your son, you raised a fallen world. Free us from sin and bring us the joy that lasts forever. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Benjamin Arrowsmith, a pupil of the Abbey School, will now give us the first reading, which is a prophecy of Jesus humbly riding on a donkey, proclaiming peace for all nations. A reading from the prophet Zechariah. The Lord says this, Rejoice, heart and soul, daughter of Zion. Shout with gladness, daughter of Jerusalem. See now, your king comes to you. He is victorious, he is triumphant, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will banish chariots from Ephraim and horses from Jerusalem. The bow of war will be banished he will proclaim peace for the nations. His empire shall stretch from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. This is the word of the Lord.
shall thank you, O Lord, and your friends shall repeat their blessings. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your might, O God. The reader now is Dame Christine Lowing, the Benedictine nun from the neighbouring convent. from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Your interests are not in the unspiritual, but in the spiritual, since the Spirit of God has made his home in you. In fact, unless you possess the Spirit of Christ, you would not belong to him. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, then he who raised Jesus from the dead will give life to your own mortal bodies through his spirit living in you. So then, my brothers, there is no necessity for us to obey our unspiritual selves or to live unspiritual lives. If you do live in that way, you are doomed to die. But if by the Spirit you put an end to the misdeeds of the body, you will live. This is the word of the Lord. We stand to greet the Gospel as the monks chant the Gospel acclamation.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The Gospel is read by Father Luke Humphrey. Jesus invites us to come to him and learn to be gentle and humble of heart. Jesus exclaimed, I bless you, Father, Lord of heaven and of earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever and revealing them to mere children. Yes, Father, for that is what it pleased you to do. Everything has been entrusted to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, just as no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy and my burden light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In this morning's reading, St. Matthew is concerned to highlight for his readers the sort of opposition which Jesus encountered in his ministry, the embittered enmity on the part of official Judaism and Jesus' response to it. And in doing so, Jesus gives us an insight into the innermost mystery of his being. It is the only place in the Synoptic Gospels in which the divine sonship of Jesus, of the Messiah, is so clearly expressed and where Jesus sets forth in unmistakable terms the greatest claim he ever made, the claim which lies at the very heart of our Christian faith, namely that he and he alone can reveal God to men. Everything has been entrusted to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, just as no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Others, they may be sons of God, but he and he alone is the Son of God. St. John puts it to us in another way when he quotes these words of Jesus, He who has seen me has seen the Father. So we might paraphrase Jesus' words in this way. If you want to see what God is like, if you want to see the mind of God, the heart of God, the nature of God, and if you want to see God's whole attitude towards men, then look at me, for it is here we learn for the first time of the most profound relationship between God and Jesus. No one knows the Son except the Father. There was and there is no one else in the whole world who can claim such a relationship as that which exists between God the Father and Jesus his Son. Jesus is truly God. Now, it is our Christian conviction that in Jesus alone we see what God is like, that he came to tell men things about God they didn't know or didn't fully realize before. God is no longer a hidden and unknowable God. Jesus also makes us aware that God's greatest desire is to be known and loved and served by men, that he is an inviting God. One of the characteristic words of Jesus is 
that simple word, come. Come to me, he says. Come and see. Come to a place apart. Continually on Jesus' lips, there was an invitation, an invitation to follow him in discipleship, an invitation to share his solitary prayer and communion with God, an invitation to the weary and the heavy laden. And this was an invitation extended not merely to those who deserved it, so to speak, to the morally good, but it was equally extended to all who are sinners. Our God is a forgiving God who eats with sinners and comes to seek out and save that which was lost and that there is joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. So the word of God is where we must look for safety. Let us then not try to remold or manipulate Christ into the kind of savior we think he ought to be. Rather, we ought to revise in the light of his words our whole outlook on life. We who are Christians, we are God's elect. We are his chosen ones. And remember this too, no one is brought to faith in Christ merely for his own comfort. No one is saved for himself alone. But it is God's will that we should also be a helping hand to others. We share our faith together. It is ours together and we only leave it at all because we all stand side by side in a circle around Jesus Christ, as we will presently be doing when we come together at Holy Communion. May his grace go with us all. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, and God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. <clears throat> he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead. Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, says the Lord. Let us, therefore, come before the Father with our petitions, trusting him to help and to save. Let us pray for the Church, that all Christians will work with the Lord, helping those who find the burdens of life too heavy to bear. Hear us, Lord, gracious us. Let us pray for those here present and for all who share our worship through the broadcast of this Mass, that we may come before the Lord in simplicity 
and humility. Lord, hear us. <clears throat> Let us pray for the sick in mind or body, that those who are housebound and for those who may feel rejected by family, friends or community, through us may they know the Lord's care. Lord, hear us. <clears throat> Let us pray for our children. May they learn of God through his love shown in our families and communities. Lord, hear us. <clears throat> Lord, gracious us. Let us ask Mary, Mother of God and our Mother, to pray for us as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full, full of, of grace, the Lord, the Lord is, is with thee. thee. Blessed, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us offer our own petitions in silence to our loving Father. Father of all creation, we commit our cause to you and praise you for caring for us in our need by giving us your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The liturgy of the word is finished. The Eucharist, for the Eucharist, the gifts of bread and wine are brought by the people to the altar. Incense is used as a gesture of making holy our gifts for God. Also we use it to honour God who is holy and his people who are his children.
We pray, brethren, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Lord, let this offering to the glory of your name purify us and bring us closer to eternal life. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <laughs> Father, O oh powerful and ever living God, we do well, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. So great was your love that you gave us your Son as our Redeemer. You sent him as one like ourselves, though free from sin, that you might see and love in us what you see and love in Christ. Your gifts of grace, lost by disobedience, are now restored by the obedience of your Son. We praise you, Lord, with all the angels and saints in their song of joy. The concelebrating priests now gather around the altar for the Eucharistic sacrifice. The Last Supper will be recalled and the command, do this in memory of me, obeyed. Our gifts of bread and wine will become the Lord's body and blood to be offered to the Father and received in Holy Communion. Father, you are holy indeed, and all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age, you gather a people to yourself, so that from east to west, a perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, Father, we bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. Mm -hmm. 
when supper was ended, he took the cup. Again he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Father, calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and ready to greet him when he comes again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by his body and blood, may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an everlasting gift to you and enable us to share in the inheritance of your saints with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles, the Martyrs, our Holy Father, Saint Benedict, and all your saints, on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Lord, may this sacrifice, which has made our peace with you, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Pope John Paul, our Bishop Christopher, our former Bishop Cyril, and all the bishops, with the clergy and the entire people your son has gained for you. Father, hear the prayers of the family you have gathered here before you. In mercy and love, unite all your children wherever they may be. Welcome into your kingdom our departed brothers and sisters and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of God the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Saviour gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. We recall Jesus saying that we must be reconciled with our brother before offering our gift at the altar. So we exchange a sign of peace with each other as we approach the sacrament of peace with God in Holy Communion and the body is broken to be shared. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. body of Christ the 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 body, God bless you. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of God bless you. Body of Christ. I'm sorry. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord, may we never fail to praise you for the fullness of life and salvation you give us in this Eucharist. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
so we leave the monks and boys and people of Buckfast Abbey in Devon. May God be with you in your homes and in your work this coming week.